Now on Student Reports, up to the minute, we go one-on-one -on -one with Guilford Education Alliance Executive Director Margaret Arbuckle. Also, did Guilford County Schools make its two million books goal? Find out here on Student Reports. And we hit the streets of downtown Greensburg to get the public's take on social media. It all starts now on Student Reports. Hello and welcome to Student Reports Up to the Minute. I'm Tyler Harden broadcasting in the News and Records studio. All right, well, first on Student Reports, a business leader who has truly made an impact on students and teachers in the Gifford County school system. From organizing events like On Stage or the annual Education Summit, she proves that education is one of the most valuable experiences of a child's life. But with recent funding cuts and students unable to afford school supplies, she makes it her goal to have every student in classroom equipped with the necessities to reach educational excellence. I speak one-on-one -on -one with Guilford Education Alliance Executive Director Margaret Arbuckle. From the last five years, how has Guilford Education Alliance made an impact on our schools? Well, we put a half million dollars of school supplies in through the teacher supply warehouse. We have put probably 4,000 children on stage. We have had several thousand educated on, educa on, an, on issues at our education summit. We have distributed multiple, multiple copies of reports and, and information on education and on, on our school district. We are people who we are an organization who people call when they have a question, invite to be on panels, to be on, make presentations. You have invited me to be on your, on your TV show. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, Guilford Education Alliance, I think, has become a part of the fabric of the community that lifts up the importance of public education. We want public education support for education to be the top priority. It's top priority because it impacts our, existing, our existence right now and our future well-being. And uh, let's move on to On Stage, which is another oh, event that y'all so organized. Fun. Oh, so fun. That, explain uh, what On Stage is okay. about. Well, On Stage, when we started On Stage, which this, this year we have six years, so six years ago, wow. um, on sta the arts, performing arts education was threatened within public education. Just was not getting the financial support that because of the competition for investing in literacy and mathematics and so forth that and those being the tested subjects that arts education was getting the short end of the stick and there was not happiness about that i mean we know that that helping our children to reach their creative potential is as important as knowing how the multiplication tables and in fact children who have opportunities to be in arts education do better in math and reading than those who don't most definitely. Um, now, um, let's end uh, with some advice you would give to students on uh, their high school career. Study hard. <laughs> Study hard. Uh. Take the most rigorous coursework you can and do well. Guilford Education Alliance, with help of area donors, has given tremendously to many Guilford County school classrooms. Their latest contribution with the help of an anonymous donor was a donation of 7,000 books which were given out to many Guilford County students to take home and read over the holidays. Two years ago, Guilford County Schools implemented a service learning curriculum. It's an opportunity for students to be active in their school and community while relating their experiences to their studies. Students give back on the Martin Luther King Junior Day of Service held at the Four Seasons Town Center. Many students assisted in service projects to help create a better school and community. Um, service learning is really important to me because I see it as something that helps develop me as a character and helps me become a better person in my life. Schools that participated in the gift of giving this past holiday season showcased what project they completed in giving back to the community. I think they really got a sense of community and knowing that they were helping other people and they got to see the, the boxes get picked up and know that they were actually helping people and see that personal connection. I know many students are still asking questions as to what service learning really is or how to log your service learning hours. So to clear up those issues, we have Yvonne Eason, the coordinator, coordinator of character development and service learning for Gilbert County Schools here. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Tyler. Good, good. All right, now tell me, uh, first explain to us what service learning really is. Well, service learning is allowing our students to connect what they learn in the classroom 
to the community. So it's a matter of, a matter of addressing a particular issue or a cause and taking the skills and the knowledge that's learned from the classroom and transferring that into the community. Awesome. Now, why is service learning important to the school system? It's important because it allows our students to gain skills that they would not necessarily gain in the classroom. And it also allows them to really take the things that they do learn in the classroom and actually use it. Um, it becomes more applicable and allows the student to really have um, a stronger learning um, ability. Um, how can students get involved or create their own project? Well, students can get involved by first checking out our website at www.gcsnc.com backslash service learning. But one of the first things that students need to do is to think of a cause, think of an issue that concerns them that involves their community or their school. And once they have that particular um, issue that they would like to address, then they need to consult with their parents and any organizations in the community that would allow them to help and making a change and an impact in the community. Now once they get that service learning project on a roll, um, how can they log those hours? Well, we have our new system that we've just recently launched this past Monday on MLK Day. It's Noble Hour, which is www.noblehour.com. And students can go on there, they sign up and they join um, that particular website and they can actually log in their hours and enter those hours on that website, which is very helpful so that we don't necessarily have to have the paper-based trail anymore. Mm, great. Now, how will service learning be beneficial to both the student and the organization and the community altogether? It's a mutual benefit. So students are able to take the things that they've learned in the classroom and transform it and watch it come alive. Whereas our community partners are receiving great service from students that really have a, a strong compassion for what they're doing. So on both ends of the spectrum, everyone's being well supported, everyone is learning, and everyone is growing and evolving through this. Awesome. Thank you for that great insight on service learning. You're welcome. Thank you for having me again. All right. Well, three years after Yorba County Schools launched its first strategic plan, which included Superintendent Maurice Mo Green's plans to improve the school system, Superintendent Green briefed the public on how the school system has improved since 2009 in its annual State of Our Schools address. It has certainly been a challenge these last few years to do what we've been able to do uh, in our strategic plan because of the more limited resources that we've had. Uh, but I believe that we certainly have tried to take uh, and do what we can with the resources that have been provided to us. Within the last year, eight high schools have received a 100% graduation rate and 14 were named Honor Schools of Excellence. And this year, there were no low-performing schools, which is a change from the 10 low-performing schools in 2009. Along with discussing the school system's achievements and goals for the future, they're reflected on the 83.1% graduation rate, but more is needed to make the 90% graduation rate goal set in place for this year. On top of each improvement, the school system had to face losing nearly $40 million in funding over the past three years. Even with the cut, Superintendent Maurice Mo Green is very confident that the school system will achieve educational excellence in the years to come. The goals are not changing. They will not change for the rest of this year, and as we develop our next strategic plan, we will have stretch goals there as well. We must forge ahead, regardless of whether those resources come in, because our children, 73,000 plus of, of them, are counting on us. Well, if you're a teen driver, you'll want to think twice about how you drive, especially if you're going over the speed limit or driving recklessly. In the beginning of the new year, new driving laws were passed to keep teen drivers from speeding. Also, new steps have been taken for teens to get their license by logging their driving hours. To get more insight on what these laws mean, Greensboro Police Officer Neil Rowland joins me now from downtown Greensboro. Officer Rowland, thanks. You're quite welcome, Tyler. What can teens expect with the new laws? Well, uh, several of the new laws that came into effect affecting teenage drivers on January 1st, 2012. One is now that when you have a learner's permit, you'll have to actually get 60 hours of time, uh, driving time, and you'll have to keep a log. Uh, and your parents will assist you with that, either your parent or your legal guardian. Once you get 60 hours logged in, uh, you can move up to the next step in the uh, provisional driver's license steps, uh, which would be a limited provisional. Once you get the limited provisional, you then have 12 additional hours that you'll have to do within six months. And once you successfully complete that, then you'll actually get your full provisional driver's license. The uh, other thing, uh, the other new law, uh, it involves uh, 
driving offenses such as careless and reckless, uh, driving with an open alcoholic beverage, um, aggressive driving, hit and run, those are now uh, another other two that are really uh, significant are if you're, if you're caught for driving more than 80 miles per hour in a, in a zone, speed limit zone, or if you're doing more than 15 miles per hour over the posted limit. The officer discretion has been taken away. They actually have to take you into custody and transport you before a judicial official, which would be a magistrate. And once you go to the magistrate's office, you're looking at uh, a 30-day suspension on your or civil revocation on your driver's license. So uh, pretty significant. What we're trying to do is obviously we want the motoring public to be safe, and we're hoping this has an impact on the uh, folks who have a provisional driver's license and hopefully they, they drive safer knowing they, there's more serious consequences to bad driving. Definitely. Now looking at teen driving statistics from the North Carolina Highway Patrol, 50 teens were killed while driving just last year. That's a 22% increase from the year before. Now will this law make an impact on how teens drive today? I, I do. I think it will help. Uh, I think since the, the whole provisional driver's license in North Carolina has been instituted, we have seen a drop in the, the number of serious injuries uh, sustained by our teenage drivers as well as fatalities. Uh, I know that the, the teenage drivers uh, probably don't like the laws, but I truly believe uh, from a safety standpoint they're a good thing. All right, well, now what are some tips for teen drivers to stay safe on the road today? Well, always wear your seatbelt. Of course, that's a state law as well. Uh, put the phone away. Put the texting devices away. Uh, those, there are state laws that cover that as well if you're less than 18 years of age. Um, and, you know, just, just attempt not to stay, be distracted. That's the, that's the best advice I can give. Wear your seatbelt uh, and uh, pay attention. Don't be inattentive. Uh, know what's going on around you. Some great advice, Officer Roland. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Thank you, Tyler. All right, well, looking at GCS by the numbers, there are a total of 67 elementary, 22 middle, and 27 high schools with eight alternative schools. Now that totals just 122 schools just in Guilford County. Altogether, there are 73,535 students in the Guilford County school system. Now all these students work together to meet the 2 million book challenge set by Marie Screen last year, reaching an incredible 2,616,138 books read in just one year. I'm joined now by one of the many media specialists who made the 2 million books challenge possible, Beth Cornett from Alamance Elementary. Beth, thanks. Thank you for having me. First, what kind of responses did you have from the 2 million books challenge? We had a great response. The kids seemed really excited about it, really excited about reading. Uh, we've had many, many book logs turned in. The teachers turn them in each month to me, and we just had a great response. Awesome. Now, how many books did Alamance read collectively? We have read over 30,000 books for the Two Million Books campaign. Now, did you see this challenge influencing students to read more? I think it really did. The kids um, had an incentive to read, it had a reward, it had a challenge. They're always competitive, so anything that can, can give them a challenge, they really do like. Beth, thanks again. Well, I spoke to Guilford Parent Academy Partnership and Community Relations Coordinator Lisa Gardner via phone. Listen as she describes the feedback students and parents have given. Well, elementary students are extremely excited. I know one of the schools, Sumner Elementary, uh, they did a challenge and they sent their students, every last single one of their students home with a book for the holidays. And on the particular grade levels, each grade level read a book. And then when they got back to after the holidays, there were enrichment activities that went along with their reading. Uh, middle schools and high schools, of course, and you have more uh, independent reading. Uh, so, of course, with that, the log sheets that we developed uh, were more beneficial to them because they could log the books that they had read independently, either online or um, pen and paper copy. But, you know, the, the, the key thing is we've got lots of students who are reading, um, and anytime you've got students who are reading, we're eliminating any literacy issues that we are having. Brooks Global Studies, Jones, Reedy Fork, and Pilot Elementary added over 100,000 books each to the total count of the over 2 million books. Now that Gilbert County Schools has surpassed the 2 million books goal, 
Will there be another Million Books goal for the upcoming year? I think it's going to be a combination of books read plus books collected. So I think there's going to be some collection aspect uh, added to the, uh, the challenge for next year. Well, Weaver Academy is in the beginning stages of producing what will be known as the world premiere of St. Aggie's 84. 70 students came out with dance shoes and sheet music in hand. The show, I definitely, um, never, I've never heard of it. It's a world premiere musical, and I thought it sounded really interesting. Um, the music sounded okay. Um, definitely the writing was good. And um, overall, I thought it would be a fun experience. With many years of experience, stage manager Heather Foley takes this world premiere show as a way to gain experience for Broadway. So everyone that's going to be in this is going to be original cast, original soundtrack. Everything that we're doing will be the production, the first production of it, and everything that, that we do will go out to all the other schools that want to do this show. It's just a fantastic opportunity, it's a good resume builder, and everyone that auditions will have a fantastic time with the show. Well, City Reports goes in-depth for this world premiere. Joining me is St. Aggie's 1984's director and Weaver Academy drama instructor, Keith Taylor. Keith, thanks so much. Good morning, it's nice to be here. Awesome. Well, now tell me, what is St. Aggie's 84 all about? It's, it's based on Shakespeare's Love's Labor's Lost, only very loosely, but it's uh, set in a girls' school, a Catholic school, a girls' Catholic school in Canada, the first year that they allow boys in. And it's about love and the future and worry over the future, and it's just great, and the music is very singable and fun. We're really excited about it. Now, like I said earlier, this is a world premiere, so tell me, how did you land the rights for this show? Well, we were lucky enough in the summer of 2010, we took a group to Scotland to perform at the Edinburgh Fringe. And when we were there, we got to see this little show. It was a one-act version of this great little musical called St. Aggie's 84 and fell in love with it. In fact, a lot of us got to see it twice. And uh, we were bold enough to ask about it afterwards, and the composer was actually traveling with them walked up to him and he was thrilled that we were interested and originally we were talking about just you know being the first North Carolina American performance of it and then he was like you know I've always wanted to do it as a full length this is our opportunity so he's created the full length musical version for us and we're the first to ever get to do it wow amazing yes. now um, like why should we come out and see you I, it's gonna be a great fun show and we just have such a sense of excitement because it is the world premiere it's gonna be great the songs are great. People are going to be singing them when they walk out. Um, it's a little obsessive, actually. We're all kind of humming them in the shower these <laughs> days. Uh, it's great music. It's great fun. It's, it's going to be a super event. Awesome, Mr. Taylor. Thanks so much. All right, and stay with Student Reports to get the latest exclusive details on what it takes to make St. Aggie's 84 a success. Thank you. Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, those are just a few of the social networking sites we all use today. So let's listen in to what people in downtown Greensboro think of social media. Aaron is downtown right now with the scoop. Aaron. <laughs> hey Tyler, we're in downtown Greensboro asking people about social media, how social media is important to them, and just getting Greensboro's perspective on it. Social media plays a role in my life because I use it every day at work, um, and it's just a great uh, way to conduct marketing in a really sort of conversational tone. Social media, well, I'm on Facebook and Twitter all the time, and so I guess every day I'm on it. It keeps me in touch with friends and family and everyone around the world that I don't know aren't living around me. So uh, it's pretty much uh, a main part of my life, I guess. Facebook has definitely made a positive impact. It's, um, it's been helpful in that I can stay more in tune with not just my friends, but current events. Um, I think that social media gives us a way to connect with people that otherwise we might lose track of. Well, I use it at work every day, and then of course for entertainment purposes. To keep up with people that yeah. you haven't seen in a while. Businesses and private individuals should be on there because that's where the action is. That's where people, you know, communicate. I get a little addicted sometimes, but it's okay. And also, it, it's yeah. nice to be able to do that without always having to make that phone call or having to send that email. I think it makes makes our lives easier in a way. Mostly, Facebook mostly connects to all my friends, like people who I haven't seen in a long time, like her. Normally, yeah. I text her and be like, hey, and you know, just connect to everybody that I haven't seen in a while. It diminishes social skills on a face-to-face -face interaction level because everything's so convenient and it's really easy to construct an identity. I think it's in this growing, uh, technologically advancing generation, uh, I think without it, um, it's just harder to stay more in tune with what's going on. 
I, I get a lot of information from social media. So it's um, it, I, I enjoy it. I like it. Skype, you can video call people you haven't actually physically seen in a really long time. But we're not addicted to it. We mainly <laughs> just keep up with our boys and their friends. It's basically another form of like mail or email or anything like that. Greensboro is really dialed in on Facebook. I find a lot. So most of my social things, work-related things, I, I find it on Facebook. Yeah. I probably spend too much time on there. <laughs> Email, email, Facebook a little bit, you know, but uh, most of the time it's just word of mouth <laughs> with me. That's how my social media is. <laughs> and if you could sum up social media in one word, what would it be? Communication. Instant. I guess innovative. Networking. I'm going to say chaotic. I think it's helpful. Pervasive. Necessary. <laughs> Fabulous. Uh, relationship with other people. Okay. Having fun and connecting and get to know other people. I think it's a waste of time. Okay. To be honest. Constant. A necessity. <laughs>if you have Greensboro's views on social media. Back to you, Tyler. Thanks, Erin. Now, before you go, what was the overall opinion on social media, positive or negative? Um, I think they were mixed, Tyler. Some people had positive things to say, others negative things to say, but, you know, overall, I think we got a lot of different views, and a lot of people will be able to form opinions for themselves about social media. Erin, thanks. All right, now, using social media is a great way to interact with close or long-lost friends. Probably just being able to connect with people from my past. Like, I have friends from elementary school that I haven't seen in years that I can talk to and I can talk to my friends without texting them and get in touch with them. Southern Guilford Jr. Mackenzie Dixon tries to limit her use of social media but it has its challenges. Drama. People think that just because they're not in person they can say whatever they want and it can cause a lot of drama and people can get hurt over stuff online. Kathleen Keating, a professor at Greensboro College, describes how students can get stressed having to be on all the time. Students feel stressed now from uh, having to be connected all the time. And it was surprising how many students um, agreed with this author that um, the, the imperative to stay connected is almost too much now. Um, and they recognize all the, the tremendous gains in being able to contact people far away um, in accessing Wikipedia and other knowledge sources, but there is some um, real pressure there for them um, in terms of having to be on all the time. Um, the students say, if I don't know what's going on on Facebook, I'm going to feel left out. Wondering how you can limit or control your addiction to social media? Professor Keating has the solution. Um, going uh, several hours without checking email, um, putting the phone in a different place, um, um, trying to um, limit the number of times um, that you're online per day. That's, those are um, some strategies to use. Social media has forever changed how we interact, and if you want to learn more on the subject with the expert, Professor Keating, just log on to thetdhmedia.com. It's only on student reports, uncut. Well, with the new year, many of us are heading to the gym, but if you're looking for an alternative way to lose the pounds, just get active and dance to the music in Zumba. So joining me now is certified Zumba instructor, Lauren Starr. Lauren, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for coming out here. Well, Zumba seems to be like the new craze now, so what really is it? Zumba is the new Latin dance fitness. Um, it's a lot of Latin and hip-hop, um, salsa, cha-cha. It's a whole mix of an hour of just straight cardio. All right, well, Lauren, according to the North Carolina Health Department, North Carolina ranks fifth in the nation for the largest childhood obesity rate. So what are the benefits uh, of Zumba for students, and why should they get involved? Uh, they could get involved because it's first a great way to get in shape. Um, a lot of people are losing weight every day with Zumba, and it's just fun. Even if you don't want to lose weight, you just come out and dance and get in healthy shape. Now, would students enjoy it? Oh, yes, definitely. I know several people that like to come out in Zumba. All right, Lauren, let's see you in action. Now, while Lauren gets warmed up, here's some more facts on Zumba. Like, did you know Zumba started as a fluke by creator Beto Perez in the 1990s? Now, it's taught in over 90,000 locations in over 110 countries. Wow. Well, let's send it back to Lauren. Let's reach!
It looks like a win-win. You get a great workout and you have fun too. If you want to join one of Lauren's six Zumba classes at four different locations in Greensboro, you can like her on Facebook. Just search Zumba with Lauren. Right, well, are you a member of the PTA? Many parents are, and it's the PTA at our Gilroy County Schools that work around the clock to make our schools even better. Through fundraising and volunteering, PTA members make a difference. While Sharon Evans is an active PTA member, she works at Southeast High School to make it the best it can be. Sharon, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Now tell me, how um, does the PTA impact Southeast High School? Um, we do a lot at Southeast High School. We have what we call the PTA 7-Eleven, <laughs> and we offer on-the-clock copy service to the teachers. Uh, we also offer them a little snacks and coffee. Um, we run errands. We sometimes have to run in and relieve a teacher. Um, we look forward to doing that and we help the kids as much as possible as too. The kids know where the PTA room is and they come down there if something's wrong or if they need something or a teacher needs something. Mm -hmm. What a great help that you offer. Mm -hmm. um, now the Reflections program just wrapped up. Tell me um, kind of what is the Reflections program and uh, how did it go this year? Well, the Reflections program is where the kids w can show off their video talent, their um, photography talent, even a little drama talent. Um, you can do certain um, pictures and have them on matted forms that they send in. And usually we try to partner up with Miss Sterling, our art teacher. Um, she kind of helps us with that. Um, this year was a little weak, but we look forward to next year. It usually picks back up. Yeah, better things to come. Better things your, to yeah, come. Exactly. Mm -hmm. right. All right, now, how can parents uh, get involved in their local school's PTA? They can always contact the office and ask for me, because I'm usually there every day, um, or someone in the PTA room. We have our PTA membership forms at all times, and they can contact us, and we always have something for anybody to do. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for all you do for the teachers thank and the you. students at, at schools all around Gilbert County. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Take a minute to check out what TDH Media and Student Reports is working on at thetdhmedia.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook for the latest scoop on positive Gilbert County Schools news. And by the way, check out Student Reports Uncut on YouTube. Log on for an exclusive behind-the-scenes look into Student Reports and full-length interviews from this show and others. And that wraps up Center Reports Up to the Minute, broadcasting from the News and Records studio. I'm Tyler Harden. We'll see you back here next time.